my allegiances to Oxford now. Mate, this is, this is, do you this? Don't forget. Don't forget, mate. No. You mate, forget, <laughs> mate. All the best, mate. Nice and deep, All the best, mate. All the very best. Go <laughs> 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 that way. Yeah. Us. Keep swimming, buddy. All the best, mate. Several weeks before the beginning of the new term at Oxford, a squad of potential players is called for pre-season training and assessment. The new term brings pressure. Varsity is near. Oxford expects. If they come back and, and they don't reach the levels that, that we expect them to get, um, then they don't go on the tour. Uh, it's as simple as that. I mean, we've invited sort of 37 players back. Uh, only 26 will go on tour. So, so everybody's place is under a certain amount of pressure. I expect the players fully prepared physically and mentally for what's going to be an arduous few months in the lead up to the varsity match. And when I say physically, we will be certainly giving players uh, exercise programs, resistance work, conditioning work um, that we expect them to complete, which will obviously aim to have them in optimal condition. They're sharp, uh, they're fresh and mentally they have, have the desire and certainly the mental energy to get through such a tough term. Um, today's really to find out how much work uh, the guys have been doing over the summer. Um, all the guys returning uh, to Oxford after last season, they've been on a, a pretty severe program since uh, the beginning of April. Um, they've been fitness tested once during the summer and now it's just to see before the season starts uh, exactly what sort of shape they're in. Um, for the new guys coming in, they've obviously been on programs as well, but a number of them have been abroad or they come in from another university. So it's really a question of, um, everybody being accountable for the work they're supposed to have done before they start the season. It, it, it's very important that the captain, I think, leads the way in whatever, whatever you, know, you can. And, and fitness is one of those things, but there are some really quick cries out there. I, I don't know how, if these old legs can keep me going. If you haven't put the work in, that's very obvious, and, uh, and therefore you'll stay behind for an extra three weeks and put the work in while we're away in Argentina. Cambridge, too, has a named pre-season squad. We arrived here, we have a training squad of 35. That includes all your, your past blues, all your present blues, and your, some young players, promising players that are looking to take upon on tour. And then you have the new guys, and that, that's usually about anything up to five, six, seven players. You basically turn up here with your suitcase, and it's just, where am I going? I, yeah, I don't have anything planned. I mean, you try and organise your, your college combination, but because the college don't really open the combination up until term starts, or just before term starts. All the boys who are, who are already here, they have flats and maybe you, you, find, you bunk down somewhere just for the week before you go on tour. Uh, the purpose of this camp, guys, I see is, is purely a, uh, a team building exercise uh, for the whole, for the, basically for the Blues and a 60s squad, okay? But at this stage, we've identified 32 players who we feel are strong Blue contenders, okay? I'm realistic in my chances that being a second year undergraduate, it's going to be very tough, especially playing in the forwards where physicality is such a massive thing. And I'm five, six years behind a lot of the other guys I'm competing with, but I've just got to give them my best shot. The way I look at it, if you don't get on, you know, you're, you're pretty much written off your chance of getting a blue, obviously. Follow me, follow me. Speed it up, fellas. Straight through, keep going, keep going, that's it, we've won it. Oh. Yeah! Nathan's fears have been realised. He's not on the list of players to travel to Japan for the Cambridge tour. Just, I just told him reasons why we didn't take him, that was based on the fact that we've only got 25 players to take, and uh, had it been 26, he would have been on the plane. Jeez, and it's not nice at all, bloody hell. Meanwhile, Oxford have travelled to Argentina. The long journey gives Hooker, Di Griffiths, a chance to entertain. Though not everyone is appreciative of his talents. So I just got really fucked. <laughs> 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 There are a number of guys already in the lift and they pleaded with uh, one member of the tour party not to get in because it was going to over, overload the lift and cause, you know, a potentially harmful situation. Uh, Johnny Allen refused to uh, give in to their demands and jumped into the lift, <laughs> resulting it, 
in the, resulting in the lift plummeting down to the basement. Um, so, John, for your extreme act of stupidity, you've got these for today. <laughs> Too many parts. <laughs> All right. Oh, we love it. Yeah, I was, I'm actually amazed at how, how much they love their rugby over here. Every other shop seems to be a rugby shop. It seems to be on all the TV channels. Um, when we were training yesterday, there was quite a large crowd of people. You yeah, know, I'm quite amazed at how big rugby is over here, actually. Cambridge have travelled to Japan, where there is a long history of successful Oxbridge tours. Acclimatising to the heat and humidity of Tokyo is the biggest problem. So training is scheduled for the early mornings after which the team are free to explore. Well, uh, the university rugby in Japan is very popular, uh, but uh, after the championship of um, universities, uh, we don't know what sort of level we are in, 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 in the world. And it is a good opportunity for Japanese university to play against um, university like Cambridge or Oxford. This is the start, folks. This is the start. This is where it all begins. Okay, 13 weeks of it. For us, it provides us with exactly the right type of opposition early in the season. Uh, the Japanese sides are very competitive. They're always very quick, very fast. Uh, they play at 90 miles an hour. Uh, it's a good test for us when we're putting the team together uh, and new players are playing together for the first time. The concentration on fitness over the summer begins to prove its worth and Cambridge start to take control. The first game, the first win, and for many, the first ceremonial bow, led by the captain, who has more surprises in store. Thank you very much for today's game. We feel very honored to play against such a strong and historic uh, traditional team. This is us, boys. This is us. This is where it starts today. Back in Argentina, Oxford are minutes away from their first game of the tour. The first whistle, boys, is where it's at. We turn it up, we turn up the heat. All right, we come here and we dictate turns. Oxford start well against strong opposition. But in front of their home crowd, Rosario begin to exert pressure of their own. And gradually the tide turns. First game, first unexpected defeat, and lessons to be learned by a team playing together for the very first time. Putting the defeat behind them, Oxford experienced the legendary hospitality of their Argentinian hosts. Muchas gracias um, uh, por la fantástica hospitalidad para con nosotros, Oxford University. <laughs> Stuart, meanwhile, has no such language barriers. He's lived and worked in Japan, and as the sun rises on another training day, he takes some of the players to Tokyo's famous fish market, to the tuna sales, where a single fish can sell for as much as $20,000. Raw fish and green tea is not everyone's idea of breakfast at six in the morning. But when in Rome, both universities are inundated with entertainment invites while on tour. And with only limited time, they have to be selective. Drinks at the British Embassy in Tokyo is a standing invitation, with a chance to meet old friends, an added bonus. Last team is just winning or losing, and we lost. So if I could, I wish to go back to Cambridge to play again. Yes, to win. Oxford are back on the river. Time for sightseeing before training that afternoon. It's a chance to recover and relax, take in the sights, and generally soak up the atmosphere. It's also a chance for the elected tour dancers to show their moves. By way of a cultural exchange, Oxford are training at a local school. Argentina is a rugby nation, and touring stars are treated accordingly. 
While the fans wait outside, the players get their first taste of celebrity before the more serious business of training begins. Cambridge have been ordered to step up the workload on and off the pitch. Another victory in their second game is followed by a day off and a court session to impose fines for behaviour unbecoming. Pray silence for the master. Right, silence in court. OK. Right, boys. All the, uh, Offences range from late timekeeping and wearing the wrong attire to forgetting the words of your own national anthem. There's no escape from the long arm of the court and no shortage of beer or suspects. With the tours completed, the players return to begin lectures. For four of the Oxford squad, a new term means a new house and a lottery to see who gets the biggest room. At the end of the day, we decided in Argentina to draw lots. I had one or two reservations about drawing lots because we hadn't seen the house yet. Cut a long story short, I took care that I drew number four. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, n no qualms about it whatsoever. I'm just happy to be here and it's a place to put my head. And for the stick that those other guys get for the size of rooms they get, I'm happy to have this one. The house is not the most academically focused house in Oxford. That is, that is without a doubt. Um, with regards to training, we are pretty focused. The good thing is that we've got each other here to make sure that we're always there on time, that we don't leave anything behind and that sort of stuff. So being four rugby players, we are pretty focused on rugby. I really enjoy my course. Uh, I've, I've been... So, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been surprised in, in many ways by the content of the course, but it's been surprised in a good way. It's, it's pretty much what I was hoping Oxford would be in terms of the academics. Final selection for the Blues at Oxford is often decided by a player's performance in the major Stanley's game in the middle of November. Considered the warm-up game for the varsity itself. The annual challenge between the Blues and an Invitation 15 is the players' last chance to show their worth and justify their selection to the captain. These are the games we remember. We win today. We win today and we win Vasquez. As last year's losers, Oxford must travel to Cambridge to challenge them to defend their title in this year's varsity match. Um, to which you can expect to get a, a rousing welcome. <laughs> um, so be, be ready for that. In fact, lap, lap it up, you know. Once we get to the other side in front of the uh, members stand, there'll be a table set up with the MMC trophy on it. You guys will stop five, ten metres back from that table. I'll continue on and, um, and basically challenge Stu, Eru, their captain, um, to a fight. <laughs> As captain of this year's Oxford University 15, I challenge you, Stu, Eru, to bring your Cambridge team to Twickenham on the 9th of December to compete for the 122nd varsity match, where we'll go all out for the MMC trophy. On behalf of Cambridge University, I accept your challenge. I will bring 15 of my finest to Twickenham to defend with all our might the MMC trophy. The Cambridge Blues are due to play their own pre varsity warm up game against a Steel Bodger 15. Dr. Winslow asked me if I would collect a team to play against Cambridge 10 days before the varsity match high quality 15 as I was playing international rugby at the time I was able to collect the players and all I asked was that we had a dinner afterwards and made something of it and had a bit of a party and he agreed to that and it's gone on I think I've now done 55 years or something like that. My father went to Cambridge um, when he was a similar age to me but um, I didn't get a blue. Um, a lad called Gerald Davis, a Welshman, kept him out of the side but um, 
he uh, he was like a driving factor in my life and he's sort of you know my idol um, so and he's passed away unfortunately but for so to for, for, for me and from my family's perspective ga- gaining a blue is um, you know is on a par to international status really so so it means a lot well this year I think is the year that I really want to go for it I think it'll be amazing to run out at Twickenham um, I think it's it certainly would be the highlight of my sort of rugby career. Getting a blue is not the end. Getting a blue is a start. Getting a winning blue is the end. Well, it's been a tough 48 hours. It's, it's the, the time of year that every captain dreads. It's, it's the most difficult part of the year, and that is uh, sitting down and selecting your varsity side, your 15, and, and then your bench. You know, difficult decisions for who makes that 15, difficult decisions for who makes the bench. Um, it's a tough time, that's for sure. The blue side to take on Cambridge at Twickenham on the 9th of December for the 122nd varsity match is as follows. Number one, KB Tkarczyk, Kellogg. Number two, DI Griffiths, St Edmund Hall. Number three, HO Nwume, University. Number four, DR Lubens, St Anne's. Number five, A. Van Saal, Templeton. I've just been announced in the team to play Cambridge at Twickenham. Uh, I don't know if it's quite sunk in yet, but it's a fantastic privilege and an honour. Um, although I think a lot of the hard work does start now because we go to Twickenham to beat them, not just to play. And I hope that everybody gets as much out of this as they possibly can and enjoy this special time. All right, so good luck and enjoy it. And Let's smash him. He's basically. there to, you know, to pick a winning team, and he has to forget all of that um, when it, you know, when it comes down to choosing. So, I think there's been a number of decisions that are, and jobs for him that have been difficult this week in telling guys they're not involved, etc. That with Graham was was one of the more difficult things that, that I've had to do, quite simply. Um, he's he's a quality player who would have would have done the team well on the day. There's no doubt about that. Um, it, it was a situation where, where he and, and James were, were neck and neck for some time, going for the nine position, and, and we decided to go that way with James. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, gentlemen, gentlemen, if I could propose a toast, shoe the tabs. Shoe the tabs. Stu Aru and the coaching staff meet to decide the Cambridge Blues. The captain has the final say on every selection. And at seven the next morning, as tradition demands, he cycles to the college of every player in the squad to inform them of their fate. Life, how are you, mate? Good morning, how's things? You're all. Well. Yeah, mate. Just uh, came around to formally and invite you to play at Twickenham on the ninth for the Blues. Okay. I'll give you my best, mate. Good stuff, bro. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate it. Why don't you down, man? No, I won't beat around the bush, mate. Um, yeah, well, I'm sorry, mate, you haven't made the count, OK? Gutted. There's not much you can say, really. It's... Yeah, apparently I'm not aggressive enough. Too much of a nice guy. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. Well, thanks, mate. I'll see you at 3, eh? Well done. you down, mate. Thanks a lot. Right. OK. That's great. Wheels, how are you, mate? Any other year, you'd walk into the side at 8, have this year you've walked in at six. Get out of here, bastard. You scared me there. Right well on, buddy. Cheers, bro. Right well on. I'm with you. I'm with you all the way, mate. Relieved. Scared. I've been scared for a while because I've uh, been injured and uh, only had a couple of games really to play myself into the team. So I'm, uh, I was worried. I was worried. But I had quite a decent game yesterday. So hopefully uh, that was enough. That was enough to do it. Uh, beating now. Beating. Yeah, is it? It's bus, mate. 
Vad bra. Jag får det sen. Ja, för alla. Det är kan vi. Nej. Det är så det. Det är väldigt svårt att se den här snart. Um, that's come down that I haven't seen enough of your play, mate. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you've missed out on the blues. That's the first guy that's uh, been you know, pretty, ups, pretty upset about it, but I, I think to be fair, he, he understood. You know, he was struggling to make this, this squad as such, but, but still, though, you see tears and eyes, it's not easy at all. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, what, it's the nature of the job, we keep pushing on. What a cracking day. <laughs> See, there are very special documents for their, um, the captain's diaries. And um, right here we've got entries from 1947 up until last year in these two books. I had it sitting beside my bed and every night I'd just pull it out and read a, read a year. And, just, uh, and it sat there and it was quite an honour to, to to be provided with that opportunity. You know, there's a, there's a wealth of um, knowledge and, and expert opinion in these in these diaries, and and as I said, they're they're, they're special and, and certainly sacred to captains, and, and it, that needs to be respected and kept that way. These uh, all these traditions at Cambridge that, that we had, and I'm sure Oxford followed the same sort of traditions. I don't really know though. Um, to my mind, that was just all part of the experience. It was part of the unique atmosphere and, and being part of, of the varsity uh, team, the Cambridge varsity side. Traditionally, the last official meeting of the Cambridge team before they travel down to Twickenham is a toast with port and nuts at the residence of the club president. On this occasion, Fitzwilliam College. <laughs> port